We welcome Fred Biondi to the Media Center. Fred, you've had two top tens. This is your fifth lag. One in 2019, you finished tight six in Casa de Campo. You finished runner-up last year. 22 years old, you're the best ranked player this year at the Latin American Amateur Championship. You're finishing your college at the University of um, Florida. You're a senior there. Um, how has your year been up to here, from the last lag to this one? Um, my life and my year has been really good. Um, it changed a lot, too, since the last lack. Um, as I talked to a couple of people, I walked into that lack ranked over 300 in the world, and um, six months later, I was inside the top 20, and it, it just kind of, everything happened really fast. And, um, and I think that the lack helped me a lot, uh, realized uh, my potential and realized other things that I didn't in the past. And it has made a big turnaround and improved my game and turned it to the next level. So, of course, every, every eye must be on you back in Brazil after your performance last year. So how do you um, manage those expectations, you know, being, um, because now you know that you can win this tournament being so close? Yeah, and uh, again, it's still 72 holes of golf. Um, there's a lot of talented players on the field and um, there's a lot of players that I've played all the time at school and in South American tournaments. And uh, yeah, I mean, there are expectations and uh, outside uh, pressure for sure. And uh, there's the media and then there's the people. And yeah, you can let it impact you. But at the same time, uh, I just try to, it's another golf tournament and try to uh, do all these things for myself. Uh, I just feel like very centered and uh, just making sure I'm going through my process. I'm, I'm doing my best out there. I'm keeping a great attitude. And uh, we just kind of add them up in the end. And it's still, it's a golf tournament. And uh, I know this is, means a lot to me and to everyone playing. But at the same time, like, I can't think like that. I just take the next shot and uh, just keep, keep on moving. Questions, please? Fred, um, what have you learned from last year uh, being in contention that you can uh, use this week? Um, I learned a bunch, and if I can start being like kind of specific with it, I think uh, shot selection and shot shapes and learning my game, um, and I think doing those circumstances and during those times, it's kind of where you have to believe in yourself and, and follow those um, those shots and, and that confidence the most um, because you're going to be uncomfortable. I mean, there's going to be a camera on your face. There's going to be people following you. Um, and there's a lot on the line here. So I just got to keep, keep doing your process and keep trusting the things you do best and just uh, keep it simple just right in front of you. Francisco. Fred, you told us off camera that you played 17 holes. How did you see the course and what it will be the, the key this week? Um, the, it's a great course and I got to play 18 yesterday and 17 today. Um, and the conditions are great. Um, it's pretty straightforward kind of in front of you. I think the wind can play a big factor here. It can make the holes play really long or play really hard. And, um, but again, just try to hit a lot of fairways. There's a couple of tight holes, water pretty much everywhere out here. and just. Keep it simple, keep giving yourself looks, take advantage of some short par fives or some wedges that you have, and uh, just make less mistakes. The rough isn't something that's really uh, a penalty out here, um, unless you have a long, really long iron in, but it's, it's again, it's kind of picking good lines, hitting good shots, and, and just kind of keeping in front of you. Fred, um, PGA2 University is a huge thing for you. You are in the top five, I guess. Um, do you have that in mind, thinking of this tournament, the possibilities that you may have if you win here to play majors and earn big points for the univer PJ2 University? Tell me about this. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's all these things in mind. And um, again, like the media and the people around, there's always uh, um, expectations or outside pressure and it, all those things I can't control. Uh, the only thing I can control is when I tee it up and how I hit it. 
um, how I act out there. So I think that, yeah, I mean, there are all these things, and it's awesome. I mean, PGA Tour U, it's the biggest opportunity that has been given to really any amateur player out there, and it's, it's, a, it's a big jump, and they have done such a good job. And, yes, it's, it, 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 it can be in the way sometimes mentally, and if you don't let it affect you, I think it's, it's the best way possible. I mean, I go out there, and I'm not thinking about – uh, if I win or if I don't, or it, it just how I think about it. It's like I just go through my process. I just doing there, trying to hit good shots, and trying to post a score and have fun and play for myself. And then I guess in the end of the week we'll see what happens. And uh, um, if I win, amazing, and it'll be awesome for sure. But at the same time, like if I win, if I don't win, I'm gonna go back home and just do the same thing, just work and and trying to get better. And I think that's how I kind of get away with uh, the pressure and the expectations. Uh, Fred, of all the golf courses you've played, the lack, which one is the one that suits your, or has suit your game best? Um, I would say Casa de Campo, just because of uh, my finishes there, and it's a course that I like a lot. Um, I mean, it's, the views are amazing there, and uh, uh, the place is amazing, resort, everything in general at Casa de Campo is, it's, it's amazing, and I tell everyone that um, worldwide, just there's not many golf courses with that view and that uh, those holes, and I think that's the my favorite one. Okay, Fred, um, this is your fifth luck. You are one of the most experienced Brazilian players here. Um, what pieces of advice you give your teammates of playing this tournament? Um, the Brazilian team is getting bigger. You have eight players this week. Yeah. So what kind of things are you telling them? Um, I told them, I mean, it's, it's an amazing week. Everyone loves it. I mean, we talk about this tournament, the, the day it ends uh, again. And it's always in mind, and it's always something that they're trying to make it. Or I was always the same way. And, um, and I told them, like, it's, it's, you got to think it's just another tournament. It's just here, like, having fun and, and do your best. And uh, yeah, there's, again, like there's the cameras then that they never see. And then there's the uh, people, and then there's the masters, the, the open, everything in line. And it, it just, it can be a lot of pressure and outside um, uh, expectations and, and outside uh, and pressure uh, where it can affect your game. And I told them like, just go out there and play golf, have fun. Um, and I mean, I learned from the older Brazilian players when I played this lack or my teammates at Florida that have played in majors and stuff. So I just kind of tell them, to just keep it simple, keep it in front of you, and um, they'll do great. Um, one question. At the back, please. Fred, boa tarde. Boa tarde. É, a sua melhor colocação no torneio foi no vice-campeonato do ano passado. Então, minha primeira pergunta é se chegou a hora de, de conquistar o título. Yes, um, taking into account what happened to you in the past, my question is if it's about time you got the trophy. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's not about time. It's, it's just, I think it, whatever happens, it's kind of meant to happen in general throughout my life. Um, and I think that um, last year, second place taught me so much. And I don't think I would have been sitting where I'm sitting or what I did if I didn't uh, finish second last year. Or, um, but yeah, again, it, it's just another expectations and it's, it's things where like I just try to focus on my process and my golf game and try to get better. And maybe eventually after adding up in the end, I, I, come, I come on top, so. É, e o Aaron Jarvis, que foi o campeão do ano passado, ele é, é realmente o cara a ser batido nesse torneio? Vocês estão no mesmo grupo, não é? Okay, the question is, is Aaron Jarvis the one to beat in this tournament? There is a lot of players um, here. I mean, it's, the whole field can be, can be the, the, peop, the people to be. I'm not playing um, on a golf course. I'm not playing against somebody. I'm playing against myself in the course, and, and that's it. And Aaron's a great player. It's a great friend of mine, too, and um, did um, awesome things. And um, I'm happy for him. But I think that he's, it's not like he's the player to beat. It's not like Mateo or whoever. 
is a player to be, it's just everybody. And it's, uh, I'm not really going out there like on my mindset of like, okay, I'm thinking about just beating him or, or, or him in specific. I'm just going there and try to play the best I can that day. Fred, uh, from Fernando. Uh, Fred, are you happy with your caddy? <laughs> yeah. Um, Fernando is actually, is actually pretty cool because um, Eric from, from Puerto Rico um, asked me if I had a caddy, and he's like, I have a, I have a good caddy for you, and he pulled me up, pulled me aside, and he, he shows me Fernando, I'm like, that's perfect, that's all I needed, and he's great, he knows, he's a really good player, he's been messing around, chipping and putting, he probably made more putts than I did this last two days, and um, it's just great, we're having a lot of fun, and he knows what he's doing to the best level, so it's perfect. The last question. Um, one last um, being in contention last year and having eight Brazilian here, is it golf growing in Brazil? We know that it's not a big sport there, but is it getting um, bigger? Yeah, um, I think so. When you, of course, it's not um, a crazy rate and it's not thing. Golf is still a very small thing in Brazil. It's not very known. It's it's. Um, um, it's hard. It's hard for a lot of people in Brazil to have access to golf courses, to have access to golf clubs, and it, it's tough. And I know a lot of people doing great things in Brazil. Um, both of them from the play in my club when I when I play there. Um, Felipe started U.S. Kids in Brazil, and that has grown a bunch. Got a lot of kids to play in the United States after, and um, it's it's growing a lot in that department. And there's a project that uh, another friend that that plays in. In, in my club uh, started and he's doing for the community, getting a lot of kids involved and getting them into these nice golf courses at some times and ha like having games and it, it's growing. It's still a very hard sport to grow and it's, I would love to help in any manner I can. Um, but I think that in hopefully in the future it grows a little, a little bigger and it becomes a bigger part of the culture. Thank you, Fred, and good luck this week. Thank you.